All right, so this video we're going to look at error bounds for the trapezoidal and, well, the trapezoidal rule, but I also have the uh, midpoint rule also. Well, let's just look at the trapezoidal. I'll have separate videos for the midpoint. Uh, so suppose f double prime of x, the absolute value, is less than or equal to k when a is between, I'm sorry, when x is between a and b. And if the error for the trapezoidal rule, that's the errors in the trapezoidal rule, e, of e sub t, the absolute value, is less than or equal to k times b minus a cubed over 12n squared. So the, the main thing that we're doing here, it, the, the more difficult part of the problem, is figuring out what k needs to be. Okay, so. I've got three examples to work. Each example is going to have its own video. This will be the example one. So this will be the first video. The second video will have cosine x squared. And in the third video we'll have, which will be example three, we'll have e raised to the one over x. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at the examples. All right, so let's take a look at example one with the trapezoidal rule. It says, how large should we take n in order to guarantee that the trapezoidal rule approximation for the integral one over x from one to two are accurate to within point zero zero one. All right, so if you remember from the trapezoidal rule, we've got the error is less than or equal to k times b minus a cubed over 12n squared. Okay, so what we need to do is find k, all right, and then we know we want our error to be less than or equal to the point zero 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 one. All right. Now, first thing I need is I need the second derivative, okay? So let's get the second derivative because we know the second, the absolute value of the second derivative is less than or equal to k. So if we do that, I've got f of x is equal to one over x, all right? Now I'm gonna be taking the derivative of this twice, so it's gonna be easier to rewrite this as x to the negative one and just use the power rule. So f prime of x is equal to negative one times x to the negative two and f double prime of x is equal to two x to the negative three. And so that's gonna give us two over x cubed. There's our second derivative, okay? Now, Let's look at this. We want we know that x is between one and two. That's our limits on our integral, one to two. So the absolute value of f double prime of x is equal to the absolute value of two over x cubed. Okay? Now We've got to figure out what k is, okay? we got to say, okay, this is less than or equal to some number, all right? Now, when you're, when you're doing this, sometimes you can get a real good, but you can take a real good guess on what k is, and other times you're just going to kind of get close to it. But that's the main thing. We want to get close to k, all right? Well, when we look at this, if we look at this on, say, like a, a number line, we know x is between here. And look, if we plug 1 in for x, that's going to give us what? 2 as an answer, right? Well, if we plug in, I don't know, maybe some other numbers, all right, say 1.5. 
well 2 over 1.5 squared that's a smaller number than 2 over 1 I'm sorry 2 over 1.5 cubed is a smaller number than 2 over 1 cubed all right notice the the further the closer we get to 2 the smaller this number gets because what's happening the denominator's getting bigger so that means the whole fraction is going to get smaller okay so what we do know from this is that this is going to be less than or equal to 2 all right actually 2 is the largest it's going to be because when we plug the 1 in we get 2 but the more we move to the right here the smaller it's going to be and so that's how we that's how we arrive at the at the 2 so we're going to take k to equal 2 all right so now we can go ahead and work our problem we can solve for n now so we know that this thing here, our error, so that's going to be k, which in this case is 2 times, and then we got b minus a, so 2 minus 1, 2 minus 1, and that's cubed over, and that's going to be 12n squared. All right, so what does n have to be? so that we're accurate to within 0 0.001 okay that's what we're looking for so now we need to solve this for n so this right here that's 1 1 times 2 that's 2 over 12 n squared is less than or equal to 0 0.001 so that's 1 over 6 n squared is less than or equal to 0 0.001 so what's going to happen? I'll move the n squared up here, all right, and then the point zero 0.01 gets moved down here. So that's going to be 1 over 6 times point zero zero 0.001 less than or equal to n squared, all right. So I've got n is greater than or equal to the square root of 1 over 6, point zero, 6 times point zero zero 0.001. So that means n is greater than or equal to, and then when I punch this into my calculator, I get 12.9. So n has to be greater than or equal to 12.9. So that means we'll take n to be 13. So if you use n equals 13, then our solution will be within 0 0.001 of the actual answer. All right, so I hope the video helped. Check out the other videos, give me a like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.